Okay, so here we have monitor number two that my buddy from Wisconsin brought down to Kansas with him when he came to visit the arcade and the video prior to this one on the channel, I'll link it down below in, in the description because in case you're watching this, you know, a year after it's aired as opposed to, well, if you're watching it right now after uh, I first put it up, uh, you may not know what I'm talking about. So I'll link the first video in the description below of the 19 inch K7000 where I go through all the description of how I acquired this and that 7000 and all that. Uh, so this being the second monitor of the two that he brought down to me, uh, it is a 19 inch G07 CBO and it does not power on. And sure enough, it does not power on. I went through and did a visual check on it and the uh, F901 fuse is blown there. I think that's the 901. Or is it the, the larger one here? Yeah, 901. The 300 milliamp uh, F901 is blown, and it looks like somebody has replaced it in the past. I think it probably blew, and somebody tried to replace it. Well, they did replace it, and it probably blew again. So 99.97654% of the time when that fuse blows, it's a problem with the flyback. The flyback is almost always the cause of that fuse going so there's no need to even try to replace it and turn it on it'll probably just blow again so this is complete uh we're going to tear it down inspect everything test everything do a rebuild cap kit flyback everything we normally would do and then we'll replace that fuse and see if it works but there's no reason to replace the fuse and try it because it's probably just going to go right out again so there's a reason it blew in the first place so something is wrong and it's almost always an issue with the flyback. So I did a visual inspection. The flyback isn't blown in half. There's no leaking on it. It's not exploded. Uh, it visually appears to be okay. So it could just be an internal winding that's bad that took out that fuse. But the main thing here is that someone has capped this or it looks like someone's capped this in the past, but I don't know where they got this kit from or where these caps came from because I've never heard of this before. Sprague? I don't know what brand that is. Never heard of that before. S-P-R-A-G-U-E. Hmm. These metal uh, covered silver looking caps. Never seen those before. And there's a handful of those down here. There's another one right there. So I've never seen those before. Maybe some of you guys have seen those, but I'm not familiar with this type uh, or this manufacturer or uh, spray. I've never heard of that before. But anyway, so some of these are that type of cap. Other ones are a little odd. But then someone has kindly uh, globbed a bunch of glue all over the uh, the horizontal width coil, which is common for it to go get damaged from heat. But now you can't even adjust the thing if you need to. It's just covered in glue. So we'll have to replace that along with the rest of our rebuild. And I'm also going to go through and do a uh, replace all the pots because someone has already replaced one of the pots here and it's backwards. So I'm going to do a full pot replacement on the chassis. I'm going to do the horizontal uh, and vertical position kit. Uh, I'll talk about that when the time comes. We'll change that fuse out, do the caps, the reflow, the flyback, and inspection. So let's get this off the tube here. Get the camera on the overhead, go over some things, and see what we can't figure out. All right, so here we are with the chassis off the tube, and let's go over and see if we can figure out uh, what's going on. I do not have any idea if it's actually working or not because like I say the fuse was blown so I wasn't able to get it to power up uh, it did sit for roughly three days like I, I after I posted the last video there like three days have passed between then and now even though it just got uploaded a couple of days ago it might have even been yesterday yeah, yesterday morning uh, from my perspective uh, so it's only been a day since uh, the video posted from the, the 7000, but it's been about three days since I got the actual work done. So in that three days, I haven't touched this. So I'm, I'm saying this because if you try and power up a G07 and it doesn't power up, the filter cap will stay energized and you absolutely must discharge the cap or it will zap you pretty good. <clears throat> but it's been sitting for three days. So it should be sufficient time for the filter cap to automatically discharge itself, but 
whenever you're working on a GO7 that has been sitting for uh, a long time, you're usually generally safe. But if you fire it up and it doesn't turn on, if you take it back off the tube to immediately work on it, you're going to have to discharge this or you're going to get a good zap. So we can simply just take a metal screwdriver like this and touch the positive to the negative and try and touch this. Oh, there was a little, a little zap there. Not sure if you caught that, but there was a tiny little zap. Uh, but it's now sufficiently discharged so we can work on it safely. So I want to put that out there. It's a very important thing for you to note. <clears throat> but uh, I do have... I'm just reading this little sticker here. It says warranty expires 12-27 uh, of 2000... No, 89. Holy crap, look at that. Wow, 89. Uh, warranty expires 12-27... 89 wow surprised that sticker is still intact there but okay we have went a little bit too far there there we go I've got my replacement width coil I've got my replacement fuses I've got some replacement main board uh, potentiometers I've got I think actually enough to do three chassis or so and then I have the horizontal and vertical centering kit. So what this will do, normally the GL7 has these little jumpers here. You can take the jumper off, move it over to shift your horizontal or vertical position up, down, left, or right. But it's a very limited range and it'll, it'll only go, you know, this far or this far. If you have to go a little bit more, then there's nothing you can do. So we're going to remove this jumper system and put in these actual potentiometers to physically have complete, complete control. And for all intents and purposes, we're adding a vertical and horizontal position potentiometer to the circuit. So we're going to head and go ahead and get that done as well. <clears throat> uh, but first things first, we need to determine uh, if there's anything else actually wrong with this before we attempt to, re uh, well, I guess repair it. But let's see what we can figure out here. So we will start. Oh, I dropped the screwdriver. Okay. So we'll go to ohms here, and we will test our B plus resistor. Should be around 220 ohms. And we get 232. That's kind of high. 229. That's a little high, but not drastically high. Um, that tells us that our voltage regulator should be good. But just to double check, we will move to diode mode. We'll put our negative lead in one of the screws here. And we'll touch each leg of the VR. And we should get a 0.5 voltage drop to each leg. Actually, no, I take that back. One leg should be about 0.5 two because we're going through the B plus resistor the other leg should be 0.5 so I believe this one's 0.5 no this one's point the red wire is a 0.5 voltage drop there we go the white the other leg is the white wire that runs to the B plus resistor this leg specifically that's where you test your your B plus voltage at and that's when we get our our 0.19 or 0.2 like I was saying so that is a good reading for a voltage regulator on a GO7 <coughs> Now let's test this resistor down here. We should get two ohms on this other ceramic resistor down in there, right there. That should be about two ohms, and we get 2.1. So that's good. Um, if any of that was bad, or, or I'm sorry, I should say, if any of our four rectifier diodes were faulty, that one would read way off. But we can check the, the rectifier diodes anyway, just to make sure. But if those were bad, our main AC input fuse would be blown, and it's it's not. So uh, we'll check this one. Good. This one. Good. Good and good. Okay, so those four are good as we suspected. Now our F902. Uh, the F902 is good, but the F901 is a goner. Nothing. Leads are good. If we touch both sides of the fuse, nothing. And it's visibly blown. So, yeah, like I say, almost every time that happens, it's a flyback problem. So we'll have to change that out. Not, not uncommon. Uh, B plus pot appears to be in roughly the correct position, so that probably is going to be close to what it needs to be. Uh, what else here? We can check uh, this, 200, this 220 ohm fusible resistor here. 
this guy right here can go bad and cause that fuse to go out as well and cause power problems. So this should be 220 ohms. It's a fusible resistor. And if we measure it, it reads 223, close enough. I realize you can't see that. I'm sorry, let's go back out. 223, so that's fine. Then there is a 68 ohm resistor up here. This resistor right here, this is also a fusible resistor, is what it's known as, at least in my experience. But that should be 68 ohms, and the, these legs like to corrode, and I don't see any actual uh, green crusties on the leads, so we're not going to worry too much about that. But the easiest way to test that is on the back side, and that is, uh, what, that is R517. No, that's not R5.7. That's FR401. I'm a numbskull. Sorry about that. So if you zoom in here, you can see FR401 as in fusible resistor. And that other one that we were reading before that was 220 ohms, that is uh, right here, FR901, fusible resistor. So that's what those are. Uh, as in if those resistors open up, they act like a fuse and it'll kill power to the circuit. So we need to verify that we read 68 ohms across that. And if we zoom back out, we'll go across FR401 and we get 68 ohms, perfect. Okay, well that's about all I need to check except for, I guess, I guess the HOT. We can check the HOT, but again, if the HOT was, was bad, um, I think you'd have other problems. So. Let's check the HOT, it's very simple. Just like the voltage regulator, we'll put our negative lead in the screw head. We should get about a 0.45 voltage drop to each leg. So we go to one leg here, 0.47 actually, other leg, 0.47, HOT is fine. So it's possible that the only thing keeping this from powering up, other than the open fuse, is caused by the flyback. So I think what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and cap it, reflow it, change the flyback, install these components, and replace the fuse, and then give it a test and see. Uh, I do want to try and remove this glue, and the easiest way is to spray a little uh, alcohol on here, and the alcohol will loosen up the glue. And we should be able to simply just pry it off here without causing any damage. Of course, this is not hot glue. This is some type of epoxy. Ugh. Yeah, somebody threw on some type of high temp RTV, actually is what this is. It appears to be high temp RTV. And ugh. even the alcohol is not affecting it. If it was hot glue, it would just peel right off with the alcohol, but this is some type of RTV, and I'm thinking about just removing the cap and the, oh, there we go. <clears throat> the alcohol finally got under there and did its job here, so, yeah, there we go. Peel, peels right off. See, now it's good. So the alcohol works pretty well to get this stuff off. I guess didn't get underneath there enough, it looks like. Um, <clears throat> well, it's intact, but... Yeah, I don't know. I, the core is, looks like the core is loose and they shoved a bunch of glue down there in the core too, so. All right, well, uh, uh, that's the situation on that looks like. All right, well, let's, uh, I'm, I don't know, I'm not sure what to show here. Because I don't want this to be a two hour video. I mean, I think, I think what I'll do is I'll cut away, I'll come back, I'll have the reflow, the cap kit, the flyback, and the pots replaced, and then we'll show uh, live on camera, oh, and this, and then we'll show live on camera the fuse replacement procedure that I do, and then we'll also show the installation of this horizontal and vertical centering kit. So let's do that. Uh, I'm going to cut away, have, come back, and we'll install this along with a fuse, 
And, but I'll have the pots and the cat kit and the reflow and flyback all done just to kind of save time. We've seen that. There's a million videos out there on doing cap kits and things like that, so I'm not going to bore you with that. Uh, all right, so I'm going to cut away, come back with all that work done, then we'll work on getting the centering kit installed and replacing the fuse, and then we'll f power it up and see what it does. So let's get that done. I'll be right back. Well, just cutting in here real quick uh, because I want to point something out that I don't think I've ever pointed out before. I got the old flyback out. It's right here. Uh, I got the old coil out. I already threw it in the garbage. But I, I don't think I ever mentioned before that when you put these new coils in, they go in a specific way. Now, all four of the legs are the same size. Uh, if you notice here, the holes are different sizes. We'll zoom in here. The holes are different sizes, but you can put this in this way or this way, and you have to put it in the correct way. If you look here on the silk screen, there is, it's dirty here, but the, the coil, the windings of the coil are these two legs that are towards the edge of the PCB. So there's these two support legs, and there's these two support legs that are that have the actual coil silk screened on the two connections. You have to make sure that you get that installed properly so you can see that the coil leads are actually these two. The wires for the coils, the, the coil, the singular, the wires for the coil, you can see there's one down in there and there's one this right here. These are the two legs for the actual coil. So you want to put this in, in here like this with the two legs for the coil facing towards the edge of the board to line up with the way the soap screen shows. Because if you get this in here backwards to where the coils on the two legs that are not silk screen where the, they face this way you're going to have bad times so you want to make sure you get this installed with the two wires facing to, to the edge of the pcb the way the silk screen actually shows so in this case it's going to end up being like so all right like that okay and there you go nice and solid and there it is so our windings are facing the edge of the board, which is the way that it should be as it's drawn here on the silk screen. So that's how you put that in there. Don't put it in backwards. You're going to have a bad day. So I wanted to put that out there uh, so there's no mistakes or chances of it getting backwards. So let me get all the rest of this work done. We'll come back and we'll get this fuse installed in the centering kit and see how this works out. And just like that, everything's done. We got all of the pots replaced. They're all set to center position because I'm not sure where they're supposed to be set. So I got them all set to the center position there. So the four main adjustment pots are changed out. I did not change the B plus pot, but we're gonna use some contact cleaner here, sprayed in there, wipe it back and forth a bunch of times. It should be okay. Uh, all new caps, new flyback. I uh, got the reflow done. There's not very many places that are notorious for having bad solder joints like there is on the 7000 or the 4900. Uh, other chassis that are similar. This one does have a couple of spots that you do need to pay attention to. Most notably R902 and R901. The resistor here for the degaussing circuit. This guy right there, that black box. And then this little 2 ohm resistor, the uh, little, this uh, ceramic 2 ohm resistor in there. Uh, these solder joints for R902 go bad. So R902, R901, the video input header pins, uh, are really the only major components that you need to pay particular attention to when doing your resoldering. Uh, that's about, or uh, not resoldering, but uh, reflow. The same difference. Everything else is kind of reflow as needed. Resistors, diodes, components, transistors. Just give it a really good close look over and anything that is dry or uh, has a little bit of solder still clinging to it or it looks like it needs reflowed. Anything that looks like it remotely needs reflowed, go ahead and reflow it. But there's really not a lot of problem areas like other chassis are. Just, I would always make sure you inspect uh, 902 and 901 over here. And then everything else is kind of, and the video input header pins, everything else is kind of as needed. So that's about all there is on that. There is one other thing that you always want to check and that's the horizontal, uh, not, not output, uh, I forget what it's called, the exact nomenclature, but there's a, a transformer here that is responsible for the, the horizontal, it's not output, there's a term for, it's not horizontal output transistor, it's, uh, I forget what it's called, but there's a transformer underneath this 
Now, yeah, I always refer to this as the horizontal output transformer, but someone corrected me and I forgot what they corrected me to, so I apologize. But underneath here is a transformer and it gets uh, the horizontal output circuit from the B plus into the input winding. The output winding goes off to the, the flyback and the horizontal output. If the horizontal output winding from this transformer is bad, then it's not going to work and you'll have a dead chassis. But this chassis wasn't dead, it just had a blowing fuse. So if you ever have one of these that's completely, totally dead, always check to make sure that transformer has good output. So we can do that real quick by simply testing the output of the windings. We can go to ohms and if we test the input side we get 55 ohms. That's good. The output side should be 0 ohms and we get 0 0.8. So that transformer is good. So if you ever have one of these that's totally dead and does nothing, then I would check to make sure that the windings are good on that transformer because they do go bad and is one of the main issues when you have a dead um, GO7 here. Now that's assuming both of your fuses are good and nothing else that you can find is faulty. Check that transformer there. Uh, anyway, all right. So also I changed out the filter cap. The filter cap is a 600 microfarad, and I changed it out to a 560. It's going to be totally fine. I don't think you can find even a, a 600 microfarad capacitor anymore. Uh, I, so I just put a 560 in there. And one, one of the good things about the GO7 is that it has provisions here for the correct connection. The original connection... Oh, hang on. Okay, there we go. The original connection was this point and this point. Uh, and these two are anchor points. As you can see, you know, it used to look like this. But the GO7 has provisions here for this type of capacitor. So it's just a real quick, easy install. Uh, and I mean, other, otherwise, that's about it. I got everything else done. Filter cap, full cap kit, flyback, reflow, got the pots changed out. So now what we're going to do is we checked everything. Everything checked okay as far as power. So once we get this fuse replaced, it should power up. And if it doesn't, or if it blows this fuse again, then we'll have to start digging into it a bit further. But everything that we tested shows that it should work. Nothing else that could cause this to go out, except for this old flyback. Uh, we checked everything. So we should, all that's left is to replace this fuse and do our horizontal centering kit. Then we can test it. Uh, so just to verify, there is a big burn mark on here, and I can visually see the element is open. Oh, I accidentally dropped my solder here. Hang on. Okay. But we can go ahead and test it. Nothing. So if we grab a replacement, Okay, and we test the replacement. That's good. Now let's take the legs off of this old one here. Okay, there's that one and that one. Okay, so there's those. Now we'll say that the ends of these fuses get with the tiniest amount of heat, they get really hot, really fast, and they will burn your fingers. So when we get to the point to where we're soldering these new posts on here, or these new legs on here, I should say, uh, it's going to have to be a situation where you cannot touch it for at least a minute, I would say, or it will burn your fingers. This, And you can't leave the iron on here for very long because you will melt the solder that's inside that keeps this end cap on. The end cap will come off and then it'll be a, a ruined fuse. So this one's bad. We're going to throw it in the garbage. And we are going to try and tin the ends of these. Now, these are shiny and they will not accept solder, not even with flux, no matter what you do, you cannot solder these directly out of the bag. What you have to do is scuff up the ends. So you can either use a fiberglass pen, uh, wherever my fiberglass pen went, something like this, fiberglass scratch sanding pen, or I just use a Scotch-Brite pad here. I take a Scotch-Brite pad, and I take the fuse and I just go like this. And that is sufficiently scuffed up. I don't even know if you can tell. 
we got the shiny side and we got the side that's scuffed up I'm not it really doesn't come doesn't come through too well on the camera maybe I can zoom in here a bit so that's the scuffed up side and that's the shiny side so yeah now I should be able to what I'll do here is to make this easier on all of us I'm just going to take my uh, flux here and just put that right in there <laughs> actually you know we could probably put a little on here it won't hurt that's good good enough anyway and then take this and just I'm just gonna plug it plug that right in there and then we will take uh, whatever happened to our legs where in the heck did our legs go are they stuck to the scotch bright no uh, here they are right underneath where I had this okay so now we can hopefully if this worked we can tin this quite easily Yep, there you go. Beautiful. Just like that. Now that would never happen in a million years if you didn't scrape off that shiny coating for the outside of this. So now we can simply just take our leg and re-solder it to this. Like so. And you have to hold it on there for God that ah, see it just gets so hot for so long. I can't do it by holding on to it. Uh what happened to my Here it is, okay. It's just not possible. This thing gets so super hot for, and stays super hot for super long, and you just have to kind of use a pair of tweezers here to do this. Then you have to hold it. Okay, stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there. Okay. And yes, you're looking at this, you're watching, you're watching this and you're thinking, man, this, this guy sh doesn't have, <laughs> he should have, you know, the mechanical arms and the professional setup. Well, no, this is the amateur channel. So I just do it the old fashioned way. Now, again, I wouldn't touch this for at least another minute because it will, it's still way hot. And it, like I say, it's, it retains the heat on there because the metal is so thin for an unbelievably unimaginable amount of time. So I'm going to take this and turn it right around and make sure here. Can I? Yes, it's still warm, but not to the point to where I can't hold on to it. Okay, so I'm, I'm just saying that it may not have to be a minute, but it takes a good long time for you to be able to handle that before you can or after you do this to be able to touch it and hold on to it. So we're going to tr use this method again here. Okay, that's nice and dull now. May not look like it, but it is compared to how it used to be. Uh, this side, it's not that good, but it'll work. And now we can plop this. Actually, I'm going to put a little... Uh, flux on there okay and then we'll just plop that in there and hopefully this will tin right up like the other side did yes success you do not want to leave that solder on or you do not want to leave the heat on that thing for very long just like little light taps and Hold it for just a moment or you'll melt that solder that's inside that end cap, like I say, and then you'll end up ruining your, fu your fuse. And also you want to make sure you line up your two legs here the same way, so. There we go, beautiful. Now hold it on there, because it's still going to be liquid for a good six, seven seconds or so. All right, and there we have it, replacement fuse. So we will get some alcohol and simply clean that off. We'll zoom out here. Put that away. And 
Yeah, believe it or not, that is still warm. <laughs> yeah, after all that time, even with this fan over here going. So what we'll do is we'll spray a little alcohol on here, clean off all this flux. You don't want to leave the flux on these things. It, it really probably isn't going to hurt it, but if you if you can, clean all this stuff off because uh, it doesn't hurt to not clean it off. And uh, over time, the flux will cause uh, problems. It can cause corrosion and uh, things like that. So plus helps cool it down. Okay, uh, is that... Make sure we still have continuity. Yep, all right. Let's get this puppy installed. Man, it's never easy. Okay, there we go. And I want to push this kind of down as far as it'll let me. And it may not because there's solder on the end of this leg here. There we go. Got it. I think that'll work. Right like that. Okay. There you have it. Now let's Solder it in. Actually, you know what? In case this blows again and I have to reuse these legs, let's just let's uh, do it like this. Uh, not like that. Get back up here, you. There you go. Okay, well, since you don't want to play nice, let's get some solder on the end of our iron here and let's just kind of... All right, now you stay there. Okay, replacement fuse successfully installed. Now we could go ahead and test it right now, uh, but I want to get this centering kit done. Okay, then we can test it. All right, so how this works, let's go ahead and read the instructions here. It's a couple of jumper wires, a resistor, and a couple of pots. So let's read what this says. Uh, there's a lot of... When you use that uh, Scotch-Brite, it leaves residue everywhere, so we'll wipe that away. Okay. Now, Remove resistors at locations R507, R531, and R532. Okay. R507. Where are you located? Let's go ahead and disconnect these. I don't even think we need these anymore, but... Okay. R507. R531 and those two are down here and R532 does not exist on this chassis there's already a jumper in 532 and that's right here so 507 is this one 531 is the one next to it and 532 is already has a jumper in there Remove those resistors and fill the holes in with solder on 507 and 532. So I guess we should remove this jumper. So let's just take those three components out. Okay, 507.
531. Five thirty two is just a jumper, but we'll take it out. Okay, now let's grab those. Okay, there's the jumper that was in 532. There's the resistor that was in 507. And here's the resistor that was in 531. So those are all out. And now it says fill the holes in with solder on R507 and 532. All right, so 507, five thirty-two. All right, remove the resistor at four twenty-one and discard it. Where's four twenty-one? It's going to be in that area. Okay, so 421 is this guy right here. Well, I'm not going to discard it, but I'll set it aside with the rest of them. That was this resistor right here. 421, put that aside. And then what does it say to do? Then install the 6.A... 6.8K in that location. So we'll do that. That is this one. All right. There we go. I forgot to mention that when you do your reflow, you got to take this back cover off to change out this capacitor. And it's always a good idea to inspect and reflow the socket pins because the pins for the socket, the next socket, like to crack on this as well. So don't forget to do those because it's notorious. I've seen it a number of times where those next socket joints are cracked and you have heat you have heater voltage but no image things like that so make sure you check those I forgot to mention that till just now all right so that's done now what does this say uh, make sure to mount it slightly raised above the chassis yeah it is okay remove the two jumper wires gray Okay, remove the two jumper wires from the PCB and fill the hole in with solder only on the one labeled W422. So remove the two gray wires, okay. And the one that says W22, Fill the solder in. Well, which one is that? They don't say W22 on the bottom side. So we'll have to look at the top side. And that would be uh, this one. Okay. So this one gets filled. And fill the hole in with solder only on the one labeled W422. Well, that was this one. right here, W422. 
Okay. Uh, install one of the zero ohm jumper wires at the location you removed the resistor R531 from. All right. 531. Get out of the way, damn wire. Out, damn spot. All right, jumper wire is installed. Well, not quite. Now it's installed. Install the other jumper wire at the location you removed the VC the V center jumper wire from and attach the other end to the center post of the V center pot. Okay, I'll have to read that again. Uh, remove, okay, install it from the location you removed the V center jumper from. That's right here. And install the other end on the center post of the V center pot. So I guess that's going to be. Hmm. Well, the V center pot is going to be this one because the H center is this one. So I'm guessing it has to go from this point to that point. So I guess we're going to do it on the bottom side. I would say yes. Okay, well, if we put this through there. and solder it here and we just fold that down there and do this okay that's what it says to do because there is no V pot V centering pot yet but it says right here install one of the jumpers at the location you removed the V-Center jumper wire from, which was right here. And attach the other end to the center post of the V-Center pot, which I guess is right here. So, okay. Um, the H-Center and V-Center have three posts each, and you can completely remove them and install the pots in the PCB. We recommend leaving them installed and attach the pots... Uh, holes the top, okay. The 200 ohm pot should be on the center position and the 50k pot should be on the V center position. Alright, so I guess that's all we have to do for the install. I don't have any parts left over except this. So the 50k ohm pot is V center. So it was talking about removing these legs and it's attaching the, the pot directly to the board, but they also say it's easier to simply put the legs through the holes in these posts, or just to simply solder directly to the posts, and I can see what they mean, so I think what we'll do is try and get the outer legs through the holes in the posts, and then we'll just solder the like this, and then we'll just solder the center to the center. So, let's see if we can do this here. This is the 50K ohm one, and it's labeled right here on the face of the pot, it says 50K. So, I wonder if we could, if this will stay here like this, probably not. Let's attach a little solder to our, leg, our uh, iron here and see if we can tack this in place real quick. 
Not quite. Okay, there we go. Now let's fill these holes here on the outside. Hmm. Probably should have tried to clean these pins first because this solder doesn't stick very well. And it's just turning into a big blob. It's hard for me to really see what's going on here. Because of the angle at which I'm doing this. Yeah, these legs are a bit oxidized, but that'll work there. And let's try the same thing on this other side. I gotta remove a lot of this blob that's already there. Let's try this again. You're not going to be able to see what I'm doing, but just trust me, I'm going to try to get this in here. There we go. That should work. All right, now we just got to get this middle one connected. And it's not going to damage anything if we don't get this if it for instance if it's not in circuit it's not going to damage anything but we want it to be right the first time so all right so let's see if we can zoom in here a bit and yeah it's not pretty but we got that leg soldered in and uh, it's secure as you can see it's successfully soldered to all three pins and it is secured and on there so it's not pretty but it works Let's put it to the center position, just like so. And you can see here, 50K, 50K ohm. And then the other one says uh, 200 ohm on it. 200 ohm, so. All right, um, there's one down. Now let's see if we can bend these a bit because it's close to that other pot and might have to get these closer together like so all right and let's bend these out a little bit and see if we can work some magic on this one It'd be really nice if it would stay here. Okay, that one's on. I don't like the connection. No, this, these legs are just super oxidized, and I should have tried to clean them first. I think that might work.
Yes. There we go. Awesome. All right. So that went on there quite nice. I don't. You can't really see it, but that went on there quite nicely. Yeah, it's hard to see, but it's good. I'm gonna put a little more on it. That's better. Okay, now let's try and get this other side over here. Yes, okay. There we go. Now, I don't know how I'm going to do this center one, because I wasn't able to get a... the pin on it. But I think, there we go, that should work. Not pretty, but is it secure? Oh yeah, that is good. So now, we can uh, set that to center and... The one thing you got to worry about when you're trying to adjust these is if you push on them hard, you'll bend them backwards and move them around. So you want to adjust these with care. But we'll set them to the middle, and with any luck, I uh, should be able to have full adjustment left and right and up and down. So I think that is about it for the repair. Um, let's get it back on the tube and give it a try and see what we get. Just doing a little bit of all tools accountability here. Uh, oh, I forgot to spray the B plus pot here and wipe it back and forth. Do, do, do. Pay attention to where it was set previously. And just put it back where it was, right about there. And right there. Okay. And with that, uh, this is that electro contact cleaner and it'll dry very quickly and it's actually not conductive either so you could turn it on just like you could spray it on something, clean it off, turn it right on, it's not conductive. So, um, But okay, so let's get this on the tube and cross our fingers, turn it on, see what happens. Okay, all hooked up, ready to go. We got our anode neck yoke ground power video and there's no remote board, all the pots are on the chassis itself. So. Nothing to uh, do for there, so we have all of our connections hooked up, ready to go. I've got B plus here ready to monitor with the negative lead on the frame and the positive lead there on that side of the uh, B plus resistor. We should be getting 120 volts, give or take. Uh, I don't know what it'll be set to because we did wipe that pot back and forth. So let's fire this up and we'll cross our fingers and hopefully this works. Oh, I realize I need to fix that glare there, so. Is that as far out as that goes? Let's back up a bit. Okay. And got issues with my tripod here for some reason. Okay. Let's fix that glare. We'll put a little towel across here like we had last time. And we're going to be using a uh, Mortal Kombat PCB as opposed to a TPG to get a better real-world example of what happens here. So I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm assuming this will work. Um, but let's find out. Here we go. One, two, three. Yes, powered up. What will we get? What will we get? Any day now? It powered on. Do we have just a weak tube? Oh man, yeah, we got a weak tube. Holy cow. That took forever. And we've got vertical hold. I do have. The Geo7 requires, it's meant for games that have separate sync signals. So the Geo7, when you're using a JAMA game, you have to jumper the sync signal from pin 3 to pin 2, which is what I've done. But we have vertical hold issues. So we need to adjust vertical hold. Should lock on. There we go. Okay. Let's acknowledge this. And we're pretty dark. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, uh... Let's turn up our brightness. That's too high, roughly there. Looks pretty good. Focus. Uh, yeah, it's about as right where it needs to be. Does our horizontal centering work? Yes, it does. There's all the way left, there's all the way right. Okay. Uh, vertical center, does that work? Down, up, haha, <laughs> yes, so that worked out. 
let's put it roughly there. Uh, vertical size should be this one. Yep, okay. We need to go down a bit on our vertical position. Okay, there we go. Let's go back to vertical height. And there we go. Well, look at that. Uh, all the color pots are pretty much centered, so it doesn't look like we really need to even adjust colors. How about that? So we have a, a tube on the weaker side. It's on the weaker side. However, it does appear to look pretty good once it warms up. That looks darn good. Wow. Okay. Uh, B plus. We are at... Whoa, okay. We are at 123.5. So we need to get down to 120. So let's monitor this here and turn our B plus down to 120. Oh, wrong way. 120.1. Uh, I think that's pretty darn close. Um, okay. Looks like we actually are a bit too red here. I'm going to turn red down slightly. Okay. Uh, all right. So B plus is good. We have a perfect good image, good, good colors. We have good brightness. We have good focus. Yeah, uh, let's adjust our horizontal size here as uh, the last test. And sometimes, yeah, this, these, there we go, okay. Okay, that's going inward. That's coming out, and that's as far out as it goes. Okay, I don't know if it was, it might have been imperceptible in the camera, but in person it did go in and come back out. So, um, all right, it looks like uh, we are good. This is as wide as it gets, which, yeah, that's fine. I mean, each game has different resolutions, so another game might be wider or not as wide. So, uh, you can compensate by changing the width cap out. But hey, look at that. It, uh, all of our work appears to have paid off. So we'll put this back. And we are still at 120.1. You can't really ask for much better than that. Um, so good stable B+, good stable image, uh, good colors, good screen size position fulfillment. Uh, yeah, I would say we have a successful repair. So does not power on. Well, let's turn this off. As I mentioned before, I don't like to clean the screen while it's running because you can actually zap it and kill the uh, kill the chassis so I don't like to do that and I'll do a full better cleaning here later but I wanted to get that off the screen there turn it back on and I'll put the towel back in place here all right yeah that tube is pretty tired but it, it does appear that once it warms up it looks pretty good well, boys and girls, that's it. I think we had a uh, faulty flyback that was taken out F901 after the cap kit and the reflow and replacing the fuse and replacing the flyback and doing the uh, centering mod and changing the pots out and all that jazz. It's good to go. So uh, hopefully you learned something. Uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to adjust this linearity here real quick. Vertical linearity. Um, yeah, roughly, I'd say there. That's a little better. Uh, no, not really. A little squished on the bottom here. It's a never-ending battle trying to tweak these things here. There we go. That's more even. Okay. I'm happier with that. All right. Okay, that all being said, I appreciate it, and uh, stay tuned. I think the next video, I actually have a, uh, I picked up a 25-inch TV off of Marketplace, and we're going to use that in the next video to see if it's a good candidate for a swap. Uh, and then after that, I'll go through and showcase the three giant boxes of chassis that I got from my buddy who, uh, from Wisconsin, who brought this monitor down to uh, give me so 
we'll go through that uh, in the video after the next one. And so stay tuned for the next video where we go through this 25-inch uh, television to see if we can make it work for an arcade monitor and how that works. So thanks again. We'll see you then, and uh, I appreciate it.